Good evening. Welcome to Celebrating Cultures Through Cooking. My name is Angela May and I'm the Executive Director of the Corning Community College Development Foundation. Our SUNY CCC campus is rich with diversity. And what better way, when I think about diversity, I think about family and traditions and growing up in a kitchen and cooking. I'm so excited to bring to you our guest chef tonight, Nogue Katandia, and guest chef Andy Playstead from Wegmans. Special thanks to Wegmans for sponsoring tonight's event. Our host tonight will be Sky Moss. Sky is a history teacher here at SUNY CCC, and he'll be helping us learn more about the Senegalese culture and traditions. So without further ado, let's get cooking. So welcome to tonight's Culture Through Cooking event. Tonight we're going to be making a dish called chu, which some people in Europe compare to a bouillon base. It's a Senegalese stew that features uh, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, onions, beef, peppers, garlic, uh, an array of different herbs and, and spices, mm -hmm. yes. And we are fortunate enough to have uh, Noge Ka Tandia with us tonight, showing us her recipe from um, Senegal that she learned in France, I believe, and Andy Playstead from Wegmans. We want to thank Wegmans for sponsoring this event and Andy for coming along to help us prepare. Um, as we go along, you should see in your package, you have the same ingredients that we have. You also have instructions with a little bit of backstory and it'll be fun to watch uh, Noge and Andy prepare this dish as you at home work along with them. So hopefully we'll learn a lot about Senegal, we'll learn a lot about cooking, and in the end we'll have something really delicious to share. Hi, my name is Noge. Um, I work for Corning Community College. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Angela, for organizing this and Wegmans for supporting us. And I think uh, it's a great idea. I love cooking and do it while raising money for our foundation. I think it's just a, it's a winner. So thank you. Now let's get cooking. Um, we're gonna start with the, because the dish, as we said, we have the option to have a vegetarian dish and the, the one with uh, beef, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna start prepping. Right now, we need to peel the garlic. So if you are doing the beef, start peeling the garlic, but to save time for people making the vegetarian dish, you should start peeling the garlic as well. The best way to peel garlic, in my opinion, um, if you're not trying to be fancy and just get the whole flow, um, instead of like cutting both ends to peel it, just take your knife and then push up against the garlic and just give it a nice firm push. Yep, and then it makes it a lot easier to peel. Mm -hmm. So Andy's gonna mix the garlic. Um, we're gonna divide the garlic when we're done for the two dishes. I think we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a uh, blender at home, you can also use your knife and just cut it really nice and fine. So, we have two, how, how many? Two garlic, right? Uh, so, we're going to divide it into two one for the uh, vegetarian dish, one for the meat, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. the garlic, we're going to put it here for the meat. Yeah, so it has a nice, uh, it's not like yeah. fine, fine, but it's a nice uh, rough cut. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cut the, yeah, you can put the meat, I'll cut the onion, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to take that, it's got nice pieces, mm -hmm. uh, just like that. We're just going to put it into our bowl. You want to do salt and pepper. We're going to season the beef with salt and pepper. Um, we're going to add oil. So, Noge, can you make the dish with things other than beef, like lamb? Yes, lamb is the preference. Um, Senegalese people tend to eat a lot of lamb. Um, you can do it with fish. The only thing that I don't know would work well with is chicken, but you can use um, lamb, fish, or vegetables. Any of them will work. Beautiful. 
So I we just turned the oven so we're going to add uh, oil. I think on uh, you need a quarter. Um, I think we said three quarter cup. Yeah. You tell me. On uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, for for the beef, we'll do the same for the vegetarian. Okay, so we have we put three quarts of oil in this pan, and we're just waiting for the oil to heat a little bit. Yeah, so you'll see a nice little shimmer in your pan, maybe a little bit of like smoke coming off the oil, that doesn't mean it's ready. So while we wait for the oil to get ready, we can get started in uh, cutting the vegetables to save time. So we are going to begin to cut our peppers? Yeah, cut, we, yeah, we can do that. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, Dakar, the capital of Senegal? And Dakar, Dakar is a vibrant city, very colorful, you know, um, like any other city in Africa, you will, uh, traffic is definitely something to look forward to. But other than that, it's a very uh, vibrant city with lots of people from around the world. Like I grew up with uh, some friends that are Filipinos, mm -hmm. French, mm -hmm. and sometimes from uh, uh, West Africa as well. Beautiful. So you won't be surprised to even see the Lebanese that were born in Senegal. I think that's the beauty of Senegal. That's wonderful. I, I heard the beaches are quite beautiful. Beautiful beaches and uh, the beautiful resort um, around uh, the country because Senegal is located just um, in the West African country, so they have the ocean. Yes, you know, so, yes. Yeah. I think it's the westernmost, the actually. The western one, yeah. So they get to see the sunset exactly, first and the sunset exactly. last. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's very beautiful. So your love of cooking, I understand, developed somewhat when you went to France yes, later my, in Yes, my love of cooking, actually, I really, I can say I learned to cook or uh, get interested in cooking when I was living in France because I was homesick all the time, even though it was like a four hour flight. But still, you know, you miss your home, you miss the food. And I never got a chance to really cook when I was younger. Senegal, they, are, they have maids at home that pretty much does all the cooking. Yes. So I met this lady who was just like a mom to me and she loves inviting young students in their home and uh, likes to cook. So that's pretty much where I really learned That's where you started cook. making yeah. chew a lot. Yes. yes. And the reason I like this uh, dish compared to other Senegalese dish, it's so easy to make. Yes. Because it doesn't require a lot of work. Senegalese cooking takes a long time. For them, cooking is a kind of like an art. You know, they do, they just don't do it to eat. It's part of the way of life. You go, you wake up in the morning, go to the market, get what you need and come home. And uh, it takes forever because they just take their time and it's a long process. But this one is really easy to make. Well, it looks a bit more complicated than easy, but it looks delicious <laughs> already. Andy, how are you doing over there? Good, just cut up some veggies. Beautiful. Is this your first uh, engagement into, into African food, West African food? Yes, it is. Awesome. Yeah, very excited. It's a nice uh, rustic dish. Is it le, le jeune in Wolof? The what? The vegetable? The vegetable, legume. Legume. Legume, legume. yeah. They, they, and Senegalese people tend to use a lot of French words because Senegal was colonized by the French. So yes. To this day, I cannot even tell you what's the word, the Wolof word for legume. So I can say it in French, but I cannot say it in Senegalese. Vegetable. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So it looks like our oil is ready. It's ready. Good, and we add the onions. And 
I like to put half of the pepper because we're gonna need more pepper for later. Just like that. And we're just gonna keep stirring. So you, uh, the aromas bring back memories, no gay? Oh yeah, I can smell the garlic and the pepper. It's just amazing. And maybe I yeah, put the... Turn that up a little bit yeah. on both yeah. burners. Yeah, turning the burner a little bit higher. So are all of these vegetables found growing in Senegal too? Yes. Would you use similar vegetables and, there? Or yeah, would you be... we, and usually the Senegal, yeah, they definitely have all these similar mm -hmm. um, vegetable and they, I mean, it's not imported, of course. Right, right. So the farmers and yeah. uh, the growers come to the yeah. markets and sell? Yes, and that's the thing with Senegal. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying maybe now the newer generation will, you know, conserve food in the refrigerator, but they just like going to the market just to get what they need. Part of the experience, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm gonna jump out of the way and let okay. you guys keep working. All right, so. You know, you can save time by while you wait for the meat and the uh, vegetarian sauce to get going. You can save time by uh, peeling your vegetable. And like Sky said earlier, everything you need is on your Wegmans package. And since the vegetarian one is easier to make because it's uh, over here, we need to meet the meat to cook a little bit more. We can add the tomato paste. So Andy's doing putting tomato paste and I'm doing the same for the vegetarian dish. And the reason I like cooking with tomato paste, I think Andy, and you can attest to that, it has a different taste than the tomato sauce. I know that making it, uh, using, tend to use more salt, but I like the taste, it's different. And while we wait, we're just gonna cut the sweet potato. You can cut it however you want. But I like to have like small pieces so it will be easier and faster to cook. Usually when I when I cook with tomato paste, I just want to make, make sure it's cooked through so you can, when you start seeing the oil boiling on top of it, that's when you really know that you, your tomato is cooking. It can be different with the beef, but with the vegetarian sauce, it's really easy to see. And you have your carrots, you know, um, right here. You don't have to use the entire bag, right? You can put as many, as much as you can. I'm just gonna use half of it. Andy has a bigger part. He might use more than that, but for me, for me the vegetarian one, I'm just gonna use half of the bag. Use more than half. So you have all your vegetables here in one bowl. The carrots, the peppers, the potatoes, and the sweet potatoes. Our next step is to just put all the vegetable in and uh, I usually put water but you, if you want to use chicken stock you can do that. Naturally I use water but since we have the chicken stock we can use it. And then I'm going to use the chickpeas for the vegetarian one. So here the drained chickpeas for the vegetarian. You can put as many you want. Uh, if you want more chickpeas, if you need two more, you can. So I'm adding water. adding a cup of water. I use the one for the oil. And this is where I say, you know, uh, add water as you go because you don't want it to be very watery. But see, minimal you can we need minimal water. And Andy and I are gonna add some provincial herbs. 
don't I mean I never go easy with that you can't go wrong but depending on your taste just add as many you want on both dishes and you want to add pepper yeah so this is um, a bouillon, um, I'm going to use it on the beef, so you can use a tablespoon, um, a tablespoon of um, the bouillon, and I can't put any here because of the, it's a vegetarian play, uh, um, dish, but if you have something uh, that, I'm sure Wegman has something like that for vegetarian, so if not, you can, al you can always use salt. Now we're going to cover it. I think I have my cover somewhere. And the aromas are wonderful. You can smell it, right? It's absolutely wonderful. So I know, Noge, mm -hmm. that you enjoy fashion and clothing. Yes. Can you, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about fashion in Senegal and kind of your style? So, so Senegalese people, if they, if they, they, can, uh, they can wear a European Occidental outfit all week long. On Friday, they wear something different just because Friday is a day of the it's a week where people go to the mosque most of the time. So um, they they really they play with clothes. They wear clothes on every day of the week depending on their moods and depending on their style. So, yeah, yeah. So are most Senegalese Muslims? Do they attend the mosque? Yes, uh, Senegal is 95% Muslim, so um, they have five percent. Um, Christian or uh, other religion, but most of the population is 95 percent. Even though they are the majority, they celebrate Christmas. They celebrate Easter. They celebrate all these holidays. Like if you go to Senegal in December, you're gonna see Christmas tree all over the wow. place. Wow! Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Very, yes. Very interesting. And the the language uh, of Senegal is Wolof. Yes. Um, it's not just Wolof. Wolof is the most um, people pretty much speak Wolof everywhere you go. Yeah. French is the official language. Right. And there is Wolof. There are other languages too. Uh, Pula, Dola. But yeah, but Wolof is. Mm -hmm. If you speak Wolof and French, you'll be pretty much well off. You can go anywhere you want. Can you teach us a couple Wolof phrases? Maybe uh, like, how are you? Or? How are you is like Nangadef. 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 Um, how about, this is delicious. Nekna. Nekna. Uh -huh. Nekna. I suspect we're going to hear that phrase soon. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. While we wait for this to simmer, I want um, Andy to tell people at home how to make the rice. Yeah. So in your, in your meal uh, bag, package, you have your jasmine rice, and the instructions are actually right on the back. Um, if you do it on the stove top, it's combined one cup of rice to one and three fourths cups of water. Uh, so about a cup of rice will do uh, two to three people. So uh, just make accordingly, or you can make extra and add it for lunch for the next day. I usually cook with my rice cooker, so my, the rice is pretty much ready over there. You can also do couscous if you prefer, because you don't uh, Rice is not the only option to eat it with, so and I know couscous is easier to make, so you can um, you can definitely use couscous. So while we wait to uh, to simmer, I made the I made the Senegalese uh, drink. It's a tropical drink, and I think the, it's made of uh, hibiscus. It's almost like a tea. You infuse it in hot water, and when it's cold, you just uh, you drain it. And I usually put mint. Uh, nutmeg and sugar. That's all. So, and do you want to refill or you want to? Okay. It's really complicated and delicious. <laughs> I mean, to to the Amer at least to my American palate, I'd have a difficult time guessing what was in here. Oh. But it's really delicious. Thank you. you see how that can be nice and refreshing on one of those hot days in the summer, right? Absolutely, because in Senegal it tends to be hot. Sometimes in uh, like 98, 100, too. So it's very humid as well. So I actually attempted to make chu or something in that family last weekend, and it was you. a great experience. Uh -huh. uh, Noge inspired me, and she's right. Like, how do you know it's done? 
I didn't know, so I just let it simmer exactly. and, and observed it and tasted it. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's the, yeah, that exactly. You just observe it, taste it, come back, you know, steer a little bit, just let it take your time to cook. And Andy's absolutely right, too. I was really cognizant of the sweet potatoes and the white potatoes, but it takes the sweet potatoes usually the longest the to longest, cook. Yeah. But I didn't want them to get mushy to the degree that yeah. they kind of just, you know, disintegrated yeah. into the dish. So. Yeah. Well, you know, some people might prefer a little bit of a crunch. Crunchier yeah, then, yeah. You want them a little cooked a little bit more. So it yeah. comes down to taste and just personal preference. So we're going to check for done. This has been simmering for about, what would you say, 30 minutes? 30, 30 yeah, 30, 35 minutes. 35 yeah. minutes. So here's the potato. It breaks pretty easy, very calm. So you can use mm -hmm. a fork. Mm -hmm. uh, we check the this. Yeah. So that one is good to go. Same for this one, right? You want to use a different one? Yeah, so it's got a nice mm -hmm. squeeze around that right squeeze on there because it's nice and soft, so it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to leave the camera. Yep. Okay. The rice. Go ahead, Andy. Yep. So you can use a plate if you'd like, or a bowl. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have in your kitchen. Some sauce. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See if they have. Nakina. Nakna. Nakna. Delicious. Delicious. That was um, it's really complicated with the, the oil, the tomato sauce, some of the vegetable broke down within it. So the paste itself is just fascinating. I like the chickpeas. The rice is, is a, the perfect like um, side for it. As I mentioned before, it gives it a texture and takes it to a different place. Mm. It's a really complicated dish in terms of, again, the traditional Western, I would say, and upstate palate. It's got a lot going on. <laughs> it's fantastic in that way, sincerely. I love that. And since I've already put my spoon throughout this, no one else can have any of that. COVID, COVID, that's mine. <laughs> COVID in this one too. So this is beef, yes? yes. And how do you say beef in Wolof? Yep, yep, yep. 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 I like me. I, I like me. So, to me, this tastes completely different. It's got, you know, that hardcore beef taste to it. I can still get all of the nuanced flavors of the sweet potatoes, the vegetables. Um, again, I like the oil. Uh, I, I like tasting oil within my food, which is strong. I can taste here too. And the tomato paste for me was stronger in the, in the vegetables. Yeah. So I'm not sure any might know why that doesn't come through as strong in, in the beef dish but it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So, uh, sapna, sapna, sapna.
Sap na sap. Sap na sap, which is like a little taste, right? That's a different level. Fantastic. Beautiful. Great job, guys. Andy. Andy, fantastic. No good. Andy, thank you, people at home. And yeah, hopefully you like it as much as you do. Thank you very much.